Uh, I don't know if you have done indexing in Python before. Maybe not so much. Okay, great. So I, I'll show you that so you understand. So let's just say um, we build a uh, we we can build a list of of things, right? Let's call a list uh, p, and then we say p equals uh, let's say two, comma five, comma seven, comma nine, two, comma three, right? So now we have a list. This is like just just like an array in C plus plus. So if we go p here, you know we get this list, okay? And so if we wanted to get the first, say, three elements of P, we go P, one, call, sorry, uh, Python starts with index zero, so not one. We go um, one, zero, colon, three. So we get this first three elements. But what's interesting here is that the last element is actually excluded. So when we go zero, three, it goes zero, one, and two. Yeah, but not the last element, so not the three. So if we go p zero three, it it actually gives us two five seven. So let's do this. Now two five seven. We could also skip the zero and just go colon three, and then it basically goes zero one two. Yeah. So this is a convention in Python that looks a little bit tedious at first, but it actually makes a lot of things much much easier down the track because. If you go zero to three in this, you go, oh, okay, I get three elements. And that makes that actually fairly simple. Um, but the interesting thing in Python is we can actually reverse this. We could go minus three to the end. And now what's interesting is when we do this colon notation, the first element that we specify, minus three, is actually an element that is shown in, in, in our list, while uh, the last element is not shown if we specify it. So let's just try this. So here we have minus one. This is just number three. Minus two is number two, and minus three is number nine. So if we plot this, we should get nine two three, right? Nine two three. Now, since this is minus one, yeah. If we actually put minus one here, what shall we get? What do you think, Niels? Sorry, Joe. Mm, yeah, no, it's fine. <laughs> um, got two names, Joe. Yeah, it's it's okay. Uh, we got like, yeah, like technically like two and nine, when I'm not mistaken. Yeah, or so it's we like get two and three. We no, we actually get nine and two. Mm -hmm. uh, why? Because minus one is the last one we specified and is excluded from the list. Mm -hmm. So we only get nine and two. Now, the thing with finance is this indexing can really, it's really important to understand this well because it can really come back to bite you if you don't do this well. Because a lot of what we do is when we build financial models, we have to basically make predictions based on, on some calculations for the next day. And if we get this wrong and we make the prediction for today based on the information we had today, we get these amazing results. And they are not realistic. They're completely uh, you know, pointless. But a lot of people do this and then they see this and they think, wow, Look, I built these amazing models, but actually not good because they just made a mistake indexing. And so it's really, really important to learn uh, how to how to do indexing. So that that's sort of one of the first uh, uh, things that we learn. But as as we as we go through, I will show you more and more. Of, you know how how we can uh, how we can do this.